For 10 months, Tokyo Electric Power Company could only guess what was happening inside the reactors that suffered the meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Last month, it got its first clear view. The utility sent a fiber optic camera into one of the reactors. On today's Nuclear Watch, we look at what they found and what they failed to find. At HK World's, Yoshiyuki Yamasaki has the detail. So, Yoshiyuki, we mm -hmm. know from a previous study that uh, fuel melted through the walls of the core units of three reactors and fell into the bottom of the containment vessels. What is the purpose, main purpose, of this latest survey? Mm -hmm. TEPCO said the camera inspection was the first chance to look inside the containment vessels. It was a chance to see directly whether the fuel cells are submerged in coolant water. TEPCO needs this information in order to maintain a stable state of cold shutdown and to study ways to remove the fuel. Until now, the company only had estimates based on computer simulations. The survey was carried out at the number two reactor. An endoscope was inserted through a hole about seven meters from the bottom of the reactor's containment vessel. The camera was designed for industrial use and can withstand highly radioactive environments. All right, and this is what we want to know. What did TEPCO find? These are the images taken by the endoscope. Conditions inside the vessel made it difficult to take clear pictures. The white spots are apparently caused by the high radiation. Steam and poor lighting also reduced visibility. What the video revealed is a harsh environment that no human can be allowed to enter. But TEPCO did manage to capture several useful images. This one shows pipes that have partially rusted. A nuclear expert gave us his take on the more useful pictures. The coating inside the containment vessel might be peeling off in places after being exposed to high temperatures. But the images also tell us that the interior of the vessel suffered no major damage. All right, and what did TEPCO fail to find with this latest survey? It failed to locate the surface of the coolant water. That was the main purpose of the survey. The camera took this vertical image inside the vessel. The grating is located four meters from the bottom of the vessel. TEPCO had expected it to be covered by water. And you mean the melted fuel in the reactor may not be submerged? TEPCO did collect other evidence during the survey to show that the fuel is being kept relatively cool. It measured the temperature inside the inside the containment vessel for the first time during this survey. It was 44.7 degrees Celsius, low enough to indicate the fuel is in a cool and stable condition. Professor Ninokata said TEPCO needed to continue to study the situation inside the reactors to prepare for decommissioning work. I believe the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. This survey was the first step for TEPCO to ascertain what's going on inside reactors rather than relying on assumption. Getting a clear look inside the reactors is essential for TEPCO to develop a safe and efficient plan for decommissioning. The utilities says it will attempt another inspection after developing a new type of camera that can go further inside and, uh, and get a clearer view. All right, we sure are looking forward to that. <clears throat> Yoshiyuki Yamasaki for this week's Nuclear Watch. Thank you, Yamasaki. Appreciate it. Thank you. Japan will soon begin test drilling for methane hydrate off its Pacific coast. This will be the first offshore attempt to extract the substances widely seen as a future energy source. Methane hydrate is formed deep underground when methane gas is trapped in water crystals. The ice-like material can be extracted and burned like natural gas. 
Japan Oil, Gas and Metals National Corporation says drilling will begin in mid-February, about 70 kilometers off the Atsumi Peninsula in central Japan. The organization will try to extract the methane hydrate by next January to see whether stable and long-term drilling is possible. Extracting the methane hydrate effectively is a really big challenge. If we can start commercial production, methane hydrate will be one of the few domestically produced energy resources. It is believed the test site could supply the equivalent of about 14 years of natural gas consumption. did not have a meltdown there, but it was potentially... It did melt. The fuel did melt. Even mm. though it was relatively brand new fuel, it did melt. And then it melted, and this was after the accident, then they mm. wanted to clean up the plant, which is still a blooming mess. Mm -hmm. But the, the fuel did melt, and it got hard and they decided they, they couldn't leave the fuel there because they were afraid there could have been it could have started fissioning again and uncontrolled mm -hmm. chain reaction and so they wanted to ship it out to Idaho to put into a swimming pool which they did and actually came through St. Louis with many train loads mm -hmm. but in order to get the the fuel that had melted in the reactor vessel out and it was hardened they had to chip it out and there were some mutant microorganisms that thrived right. and they couldn't see to do what they had to do because of these crazy mutant <laughs> organisms. Sounds like something you'd see on Star Trek. <laughs> Now, one of the things that came out after Three Mile Island was that people said over and over again, nobody died at Three Mile Island, and there really wasn't very much damage that happened there except to the nuclear, reac nuclear reactor. Do you think that's an accurate per perception? I think there were a lot of things that went on. We don't, it's very hard when somebody gets cancer, maybe 20 years after exposure, it doesn't come with a little flag that says this was caused because of Three Mile Island releases mm -hmm. and all. But there were, there were some local people who lived near the Three Mile Island plant who, did, um, who went door to door and found out about all kinds of uh, animals and plants. I, I remember read, reading some of the stories of people, they couldn't evacuate their animals in time and they came back and they f would find their animals with their eyes burned out. Are the calves, mm. a calf would be born with two heads and, you know, mm. plants were strange and, mm -hmm. and people, um, we were very lucky with Three Mile Island because, in one way, it, the, the reactor was brand new, the, the, that power plant was brand new. It only had been operating for one year. In fact, one of the workers who came that morning and saw all these cars and they saw media people, he thought they were celebrating the first anniversary for th the second reactor at Three Mile Island. And th they and, don't get to be safer as time goes on, do they? No, but it, it turned out, though, 
it was it had, had so many mistakes its first year of operation mm -hmm. that it really only operated for three months so the fuel inside three the three mile island reactor was not as dangerous as it could, could have been if it had been operating for longer you know like a whole year even or five years or 15 years or whatever a whole lot more radioactive waste and wa gases and uh, particulate material and radioactive water would have gotten into the environment. If you have painful, swollen joints, I've been in your shoes. One day I'm on top of the world. The next I'm saying, I have this uh, thing called psoriatic arthritis. I had some uh, intense pain. It progressively got worse. My rheumatologist told me about Embril. I'm surprised how quickly my symptoms have been managed. Because Enbrel suppresses your immune system, it may lower your ability to fight infections. Serious, sometimes fatal events including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, and nervous system and blood disorders have occurred. Before starting Enbrel, your doctor should test you for tuberculosis and discuss whether you've been to a region where certain fungal infections are common. Don't start Embril if you have an infection like the flu. Tell your doctor if you're prone to infections, have cuts or sores, have had hepatitis B, have been treated for heart failure, or if while on Embril, you experience persistent fever, bruising, bleeding, or paleness. Get back to the things that matter most. Good job, girls. Ask your rheumatologist if Embril is right for you. I think it's the most despicable. I know you'd say that. The most insidious. I know you'd say that. The most ingenious idea I ever heard. Let's join. I know you'd say that too. <laughs> and now a word from our alternate sponsor. Wherever you go for fast relief, it's Speedy Alka-Seltzer. Things are changing very fast in Florida today. They still have pretty beaches and palm trees gently sway. But up at Cape Canaveral, it's quite a different sight. They're launching giant rockets almost every night. When work pressures make you nervous and your stomach gets upset, that's the time for Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer's what to get. And scientists get headaches from the rocket's mighty blast. But they know Alka-Seltzer brings relief and brings it fast. And when someday they blast away on man's first trip through space, I only hope that I'm aboard securely strapped in place. They'll track our ship with radar, big telescopes, and soon imagine seeing speedy Alka-Seltzer on the moon. Yes, no matter where you go, when you have a headache or upset stomach, take speedy Alka-Seltzer for fast relief. <laughs> 